Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect. This state-of-the-art co-working space and tech labs helps grow innovative ideas from applied research and development, testing, and engineering qualification to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker is Sue Clement. Sue has assisted thousands of entrepreneurs increase their profits, reduce their expenses, think bigger, and add velocity to their business growth. As an international speaker, best-selling author, and marketing expert, Sue impacts businesses globally. Vancouver Business Network and most welcome guests, now it's time for you to show your education. Sue Clement. A little, a little dress rehearsal dressing act here. Let me get that there, and we'll be good to go. Take Thanks. it away. Thanks. So much fun. Tonight, I'm going to share with you strategies to excel. And I'm sorry, but the news. What do you think that really is? When we increase revenue growth, most people often think that it's about marketing. And those of you who know me well, for the last 19 years, I've been coaching businesses like yourselves on marketing. But tonight I'm going to talk about other strategies, or I call them concepts, that will actually help you break free of that entrepreneurial trap and be able to leverage your business to six and seven figures. Sound good? Sounds very good. Yes. So in my introduction, Roger talked about my business that I had, where I grew from startup to a multi-dollar, multi-million dollar business. Actually, it's $5.2 million. And then, thank you. Wow. Yeah. And I, I, thank you for that. I rehearsed, that was wonderful. But here's the, it is a big deal. And then I sold it, which is even a more bigger deal. The thing, you're like, wow. But it wasn't really that way. Because growing a business, I was young, English, I'd only lived in Vancouver for about a year, and I'll have to prove that how difficult it was. When I this, I really thought that I was hanging on by my fingertips. Yeah. And you have a passion, and I had a passion. And I really wanted to make it work. And I did everything I could to make it work. Some things are a little grayish even, but I struggled to stay in business. And I, I remember one day so clearly, I was driving through Annis's Island. I, my company was an employment agency, so I staffed warehouses, factories, and as well as offices. Annis's Island. And I heard a song on the radio that I'd never heard. Wilson Phillips song and I have a kind of a defect in my DNA I can hear music in my head but I can't get the tune out of my mouth so I'm kind of going to butcher it but it was hold on for one more day things will go your way just hold on someone sing it for me because I, I struggle with that I heard that song and in that moment I just burst into tears because I wanted the business to succeed so badly I just wanted to hold on for one more day. Things could go my way. Please, God, could I get a client? So I went warehouse to warehouse, knocking on doors, meeting warehouse managers, operation managers, general managers, and talked about my business. And, you know, it got so bad at one point that um, it's kind of a little embarrassing, but I had like a brick and mortar office and I had employees. I started with one and then built from there. And what happened was my landlord phoned me one day and he said, Sue, you're 90 days past due. 
I have to let you know that when you hit 120, which is next week, if you don't pay, the sheriff is going to come and lock you out. And that was the reality check of could I do this and what could I do to make it happen. And that really felt like the air was sucked out of my lungs. I felt like I was on the edge, you know, trying to claw my way off, hanging on by my fingernails. And it was really, really challenging for me at that point. But fox terry tenacity that I have, I wouldn't quit. I figured there had to be a way to make it work. And so I felt like I was hanging on off the edge of the cliff, clawing my way up to actually grow the business. And the interesting thing is over the years, it was me and one person, and then another person, and then a salesperson. And I grew my operations team and my sales team. And then we hit our first million dollars. And wow, was that ever exciting. And we grew it from there. And I signed one client contract that was worth a million dollars. One client. You're my cheerleader. Yeah. I like this lady. And so, <laughs> well, it's kind of scary because if you piss them off, you're kind of sunk. That can't happen. But it was interesting because as I grew the business, I learned that I had to be a different person. I learned that I couldn't manage the same way that I started. And I didn't recognize that in the moment. As I grew my company, I just grew the company. I just did what I had to do every day in, day out, working like a dog, getting it done. And it wasn't until after I sold the business and I started working with business owners, helping them grow their businesses, that I began to recognize some of the problems that they were going to be having before they had them. Because when you start off as a solo entrepreneur, it's you and the business. You are the business, it feels like. It's kind of like a job almost. But as you grow your company, you have to become a manager, and then ultimately, you have to become a CEO of your company. You have to, you have to evolve as your business evolves. Because what got you here, wherever you, that here is now, won't get you there. And so that was the interesting thing I began to recognize as I worked with business owners, seeing their journey and being able to project things that they didn't even know were on the horizon. So hanging on for one more day was very much part of my motto for a while, but then it got better. I got better at what I was doing. I got more successful. I grew a team and I was success, a success in the business. And so I made it over that edge and I was, I was standing on the plateau then about what could I do from there. And so when you think about it though, at one point, your business almost feels like it's your ball and chain. Anybody feel like that from time to time? Yeah, I'm seeing lots of nodding heads. It's like you are the business. If you succeed, the business succeeds. If you fail, the business fails. And you work like a dog. How many of you would like to work less hours with more profit without hurting your bottom line? Absolutely, we would. And that's kind of the entrepreneurial dream. I think that we're all sold that concept. Become an entrepreneur and you can set your own hours. Become an entrepreneur and you can set your own destiny with revenue. Yeah until you get there and it does look like that ball and chain but in my journey there was a moment of time let's see some bolts i bought this i must have played that thing a thousand times after that i had to come up with two thousand dollars to pay my my rent that month or i'd be locked out I was going to fail. Up until then, I was delusional, thinking it would all turn around. But I really felt that I was going to fail. Voice. I don't know if you ever get these voices in your head. I got this voice in my head. If your business fails, it doesn't mean that you fail. You are not your business. not my business and I'll be honest 10 years of growing that company I am not my business you all of you are not your business the business is separate from you 
The business needs to have a life outside of you. And I know that it's such a simple, trite little concept. You're clear back and look at that from a different perspective, you'll begin to see the impact that that will make on how you make decisions, what type of decisions you make, and how willing you are to do different things to grow it. Because when you're not attached to the success or failure of your business, you suddenly become more fearless. You have a different identity. The business is like a car. If you have a car accident, the car is just written off, you go get a new car. Your business fails, and many, maybe some of you have gone through that. You just go get a new business. You are not your business. I want you to go with that. You don't own your business. You don't own your business. Your business is not a job. But instead, you're the CEO of your business. And when you come from that perspective, you will treat your business differently because it's outside of you. You can make judgments about it without judging yourself. You're not tying your failure or your success to it. It helps you manage it differently. You can become more fearless because you're thinking bigger than yourself. You're seeing it as a separation of you. So that's the first strategy I want to share with you is that you are not your business. When you release yourself from being your business, you actually free yourself to make so much more powerful decisions and what happens then, when we make good decisions, what happens? Tell me. Confidence increases. Confidence increases. What else? Results. Results, yes. What else? Opportunities, yes, because you become fearless. You can ask for anything because it's not about you, it's about your business. What else? Relationships, yes. The sales guy probably should have some answers there. Because <laughs> well, what often happens is that, you know, I hear this from a lot of my clients over the years, is that they say, oh, I can sell other things, I just can't sell my services. Well, that's because they're attaching themselves to the business. When you detach from the business, it's easier to sell something else because it's not a reflection on you. They don't buy from you, they're buying that. Or not buying that, it's not you. So you don't take it so personally. You have an opportunity to kind of disassociate yourself from the rejection of not making the sale. So that's a, a cool thing that comes from that too. So you are not your business. If you can go away with one thing tonight, I would feel blessed if that was it. If you really embrace that you're not your business and to move on from there. The second concept I want to share with, share with you is to shift from operational thinking. Now you're probably thinking, what operational thinking? It's kind of the nuts and bolts, the how to do things, the day-to-day -day routines, the quagmire that we get involved with. There's lots of that in our business. And so instead of having that operational mindset, if you really want to elevate yourself to the CEO status, what you need to do is think about enterprise thinking. Think of your business as an enterprise. And in doing that, what happens is you don't ask the how questions, how things are operational. Instead, you become more strategic and you ask what and why questions. And when we ask what and why questions, what type of answers do you think we come up with? Where are we putting ourselves? In the buyer's seat. Yes, that's one place. What else? What else are we doing when we're shifting into that mode? Exactly. Perfect. We are at a higher level. Because when we have our nose up against the tree, can we see that forest? Not likely. But when we are enterprise thinking, we can see the whole forest, the lake, the mountain, the birds, the deer. We can see the whole kit and caboodle. And when we can see the whole lay of the land, once again, it gives us opportunity to make different decisions, more powerful decisions, and to actually grow the strength of your business from a strategic point of view. You know, we've all heard, oh, I should be more strategic. Well, what the hell does that mean? And if you're looking at a tree, <laughs> it's just a bark. You know, that's all you can see. You have to be able to step back from it and really look at a bigger picture and see your business as an operation. Become the CEO of your business so you're not chasing squirrels and shiny pennies, but you're strategic in how you map out what you need to do to actually make it grow. So let's go on and dig deeper into this concept. 
focus on strategy and execution. What strategy do you have your business? And part of that really is about planning and mapping out your business growth and strategy for the year. Do you have benchmarks? Do you have ideas of how much revenue you're gonna make? Or you're just kind of in there every day doing what I used to do, fighting the dragon, slaying the dragon, hoping to make some money, and just be happy with what came. Do you have cash flow projections? Do you have plans about where you wanna take your business? Do you know what the next product or service launch you're gonna have? Have you thought it through about how to actually grow your business? Or are you just kind of one thing shows up and you do it. Then you go and you listen to something on YouTube or Facebook Lives or somebody's website or somebody here says something and you think, oh, I need that. And then off you go and you're doing LinkedIn this month. And then next month, oh my God, I really kind of could Snapchat. I heard that's the way. And you go off and do that. And then you go off and do webinars because someone said that you can make a million dollars doing a webinar. And you can, you know, or, oh my gosh, I should become a speaker. All of a sudden, when you're operational thinking, whatever shows up that looks good is what you're going for. And you land up chasing those shiny pennies and squirrels without any real plan. And so at the end of the year, what do you have? You have what you got. And is it what you wanted? Sometimes yes, most often no. So you really need to be more strategic in your plans, where you want to take the business, how you plan on taking the business there. Things like working with a coach or having a mastermind group, or even just sitting by yourself quarterly and doing a, what happened? What did I want? Like, what did I target? What did I get? And then now what? How do I need to shift it to go forward? If you aren't taking an afternoon once a quarter, to really sit down and spend time with yourself in your business and analyze what you're doing. You're like a little cork on the ocean, bobbing along with the ocean, and then a seagull picks you up, <laughs> drops you somewhere else, you bob along and the tide, oh, typhoon, woo, you're over here. Before you know it, you're kind of spun around and lost. And some people are smiling and laughing because maybe you've experienced that. I know I have. So it's important that you're quite strategic in your approach. Measure results. A lot of people don't want to measure results. I must admit, that's one thing my clients really kind of drag their feet, particularly if the results aren't very good. They kind of want to avoid that. You know, and when I had my company, my first business, I was the same way. All I knew was I didn't have enough money and I should be out there, you know, knocking on doors. But seriously, you need to stop and face the music. If what you're doing isn't working, stop doing it, right? If what you're doing isn't working, stop doing it. If what you're working, what you're doing is, is working, re, re, ugh, repeat and rinse, or rinse and repeat again and again and again. Spend more money. If I gave you a dollar, and it, if you gave me a dollar and I gave, yielded two dollars back, you'd want to do more. So spend money, spend time, spend focus on the activities that are working for you. But if you don't stop and analyze them, you'll never know that. So it's really critical that you are strategic in growing your business. That's one of the things, a gift you can give yourself. So it's August, new quarter. Actually, it's a little bit past the new quarter, isn't it? But it could be a new quarter tomorrow, every 90 days. Actually, one of the gifts I have for you in the room tonight is a 90-day success planner. So every 90 days, you sit down with yourself, kind of lay it out and say, what worked, what didn't work? Where am I going with this? What do I want to do with it? So that's an opportunity for you. Be strategic. This is an interesting thing, too. And I find that entrepreneurs who have struggled are, resili are, are kind of resisting this because I say think bigger. I ask someone what they want to make this year and they give me a number and I think, you know, think bigger. And they give me another number, I go, no, think bigger. Because what happens is when we fail or we don't grow as quick as we want or we don't grow the way we want, what happens then is we become kind of risk adverse. We don't want to stretch ourselves because we might not make it. And I've actually even said this myself at times in my business, I can't afford another failure. So I become fearful of taking a risk. Anybody ever felt that way? 
Yeah, and so what happens is when you become fearful of taking a risk, you just kind of make your world smaller and smaller and smaller. And you're not doing, <laughs> wow, good sound effects. And you're not really growing your company. And you are stuck in operational thinking instead of enterprise thinking. Think better, bigger than you ever did. One of my clients was Sherry Lee. She's a social media expert on Facebook. And she came to me and she wanted to make more money, but she didn't believe she could because she wasn't doing it. She tried all sorts of different things. None of them had really worked as successfully as she'd wanted. So she got to the point of thinking, well, maybe this isn't going to happen. Maybe it's not going to work as well as I want it to. Well, working with her, I'm like going, think bigger, think bigger, think bigger. And what was so exciting was she said, bigger day. Think about that. That's a thousand. Thousand. Ten thousand dollar day actually was eleven and a half, I think. Wouldn't that be great if you did that? What? Yeah. Yeah. again wouldn't it be great if you did that at least once a week yeah. that's a five a half a million dollar company Amen. five hundred thousand dollars if you get two weeks off at Christmas Amen. right it's possible what had to happen to help Sherry Lee get there was we had to shift her packaging and her offer and in doing that she had to become more fearless and confident to go out and market that offer. And when she did, those are the results she got. Another person, I, I didn't put a slide up for her. She is a spiritual wellness person. Now, soft skill. Woo-woo out there. Okay? No problem with the woo-woo stuff. But when she came to me, her value, it hurt. I mean, it hurt me. It's like, I'm like, oh, my God, you can't charge that little. So we immediately increased her rates by 30%. And even then, she could only mentally handle 30% at that point. And we repackaged her services. We created an, an offer that wouldn't give a one-time client for like 100 bucks. I think she was actually she was $95. She was selling one client at a time, one hour at a time for 95 bucks. That's a grind. I wouldn't want to do that business. Yeah, no, we don't want that. So instead, we repackaged her business. And she quadrupled her sales in five weeks. Would you like to quadruple your sales in five weeks? Yes. yes. That's a little better. <laughs> say hell yes. Hell yes. yes. Turn to your neighbor, give them a high five, say hell yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Are you not as worthy as Sherry Lee or Laura or the dozen of other clients that I can tell you stories about that have done this? It's an inner shift to be able to step up to the plate and say, I'm worth it. I have value. I can give value and I can charge value. And being able to do that can totally change your life. I mean, just think right now, if you were to double your income, Right now, what impact would that have on your families, on your life, on the ability to serve people? Would that not be amazing? Yes. 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 So it's funny. Uh, I'm kind of taking a little sidetrack here away from what I'm supposed to be talking about because it just came to my head as usual. I do these things. I am on a mission, and uh, I have, I'm kind of almost got this rant half written. And I really want to stand behind, make more money, damn it. Because that's what I want for every one of you. I want you all to make more money. And if that sounds like a little, like, uh, what's his name on the Shark Tank? Mr. Wonderful? Yeah. But when you have money, you can do things with it. You can serve more people and serve at a much higher level. So it isn't just about the money. It's, trust me, it's about serving people. Okay, so make more money, damn it. All right. Love this. This is so paramount to me. <laughs> Where will it? No, no, no. I've got to continue on. It's not working very well. When there, someone talks. 
leverage what's working, find what's working, and do more of it. Repeat to friends. Some of you. Michelle. Are we allowed to ask questions? Sure, you can ask questions. We have questions at the end, but yes, we'll ask questions. No correlation between or something that you can really observe between what you actually do and the outcome. Well, that's probably coming up in a couple slides from here. But yes. Um, and so the question was, how can you tell what to do when you can't tell what worked or didn't work? Is that fair enough? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes and I feel that way with Facebook ads. So the Facebook ad guy, you know, it's like the stock market, you know, you you bid on something, <laughs> yeah, if it goes up or it goes down. <laughs> we might need to. But yeah, so sometimes it's kind of hard, but wait for the slide and I'll come back to you. Some things are harder to track than others, but yes, you need to test and test and test and, tw and tweak and test. That's not me. good. Um, and in doing that, when we test and then we tweak things, we only want to shift one thing at a time. Sometimes what happens if you can't figure it out, some people go, well, I'll try this, I'll change this. You change too many things and you can never really assess where it came from. So one thing at a time would be the quick short answer. Michelle. Leverage what's working. This is a big one. I understand you had a speaker recently talking about outsourcing. Most solo entrepreneurs are the bottleneck of their business. They are the bottleneck of their business because we get so attuned when we start off that we are the janitor, we're the bookkeeper, we're the salesperson, we're the marketing person, we're the Facebook expert, which we really know nothing about. We're the, we're the speaker, we're the cashier, we're the service provider, we're doing all of it, the Jackie of all trades. And what happens is at one point, when you start off, you might be able to manage that for a short time, but soon enough, you'll grow big enough that that will be your stranglehold and that will stop you dead in your tracks and you will stop making more money. Damn it. <laughs> you really will. Um, you are the cause. Okay, this, I might offend some of you, but you yourself are the cause of your revenue where you're at today. Whether it's what you want, great. But if it isn't what, it, what you want, it's you as the business, business owner. Whether you have employees or not, it's you. The buck stops here. And often entrepreneurs trying to do it all land up being the bottleneck of their business and they can't grow past that. So I'm a real fan of outsourcing. Most of my clients, when they outsource, like a, an assistant, a virtual assistant, they will increase their revenues by 20 to 30% in the next quarter because they're not doing the 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 grunt the crappy grunty jobs that are low low thank you I see I can't even say it it upsets me so much the jobs that are so low value that they're spending all of their time doing low value work that someone else could do way better they're often doing things now sometimes it's one of two things. Sometimes it's something they love doing. Like I love uh, graphic design. So I could suck myself into doing graphic design and like it, but it's a waste of my time because I'm way slower than a professional. Or they're doing things that they really don't like. And so they're, you know, not doing them well, not doing them often, they don't have the skill set. And so you're wasting so much time. So find your high yield activities and go do them and do more of them. If your high yield activity is marketing, then go market. Obviously, that's what it is. If it's picking up the phone, is if it's sending a text message or a messenger. You know, I used to say this to my salespeople all the time. If you are not knee to knee with a prospect, because we did things in person at that point, if you aren't knee to knee with a prospect, you're not any good to me. Because if they weren't talking to a potential prospect, they were not having the opportunity of making money. And so how many prospects have you talked to? I know it's only early in the week, but in the last week, last seven days, how many prospects have you talked to? If it's a low number, the buck stops with you. So why aren't you? Spend more time lead gen and selling conversions. Business isn't difficult. It really isn't. 
it's actually quite simple, maybe not always easy. To be successful in business, you need a good offer. You need good pricing. You need to lead gen. You need to be able to convert people. Then you need to great, have a great service delivery. Five things. Those are your primary things that you should be focusing on. Everything else, outsource. Get it off your desk and onto a professional. And I know people say, oh, I can't afford it. Well, tell you what, I can pay someone 30 bucks, 40 bucks, virtual assistant, 40 bucks. If I go to the Philippines, it might be five. But I can pay a virtual assistant to do work at 30 bucks an hour, five hours. How much money is that? You're fast at the math, 150 bucks. And I go out there and I spend those five hours marketing, I bet you I'm gonna make $10,000. Or five or two or whatever your number is, it's hell of a lot more than 150. So outsource, whether you contract, whether you hire, whether you grow a team, doesn't matter what style you pick, but outsource things you don't do well, things that take too long, and things that are low yield and not bringing you money. Good or good? Good. How many of you are gonna do that tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Or look into it? Just start by finding the one task that you could give away. One hour a week and then do something productive. You can't lay on the couch and eat bonbons and think that's gonna work, it won't. Okay, this is the other one I wanna talk about too. Most business owners or solo entrepreneurs think of sales. They don't think of profit. Do you even know your profitability? What percentage is your profitability in your business? If you don't know that, you're not a CEO. If you don't know that, you're not gonna be able to be shrewd enough to grow your business faster and at a, at a higher level. So become profit-minded. One, one of my clients, she did research. She used to do business plans and do a lot of research for companies. And the sad thing is, during our VIP day, we went through all of our business. VIP days, when they come in and they meet with me in person, we kind of, I call it, unpack their business, kind of sort everything out, lay it all kind of on the table, and figure out what would be her next best step. And she was so excited with this new service offering she had. And I'm like going, she had employees that worked for her. And I said, well, how many hours? How much money? And anyways, we did a little math on it. She was making like $17 per new client for the first month. Like, what the hell? Would you want a new client to make 17 bucks? No, she didn't even know that. Maybe you have some of those profit holes in your business that you aren't looking at or you don't know. So become profit-minded. Begin to analyze the profit of your business. How much is it really costing? You might think, oh, that's only a short little amount of money. I'm making like $500 an hour because I only spend one hour with that client. But if you have 20 hours of prep time, you just lost it. Got it? Okay. Know your numbers. This goes back to your, Michelle, your question. It's really about knowing your numbers and tracking everything. If you don't track your results, you won't know what's working or what's not working, what you should do more of or less of. You have to know your numbers. And this is the one thing that I must admit most entrepreneurs don't love doing. So get a good bookkeeper. <laughs> get a good accountant who can help you with some of that. Get a good system, set up a system so you can actually track your numbers. <laughs> There's one in the back going, I got that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, um, this is Alan. He was a mortgage broker, a client of mine. And what happened was he loved being a mortgage broker. He had a good job and he went out on his own. And his wife was kind of ragging on him because he's only making $3,600 a month. It was a fraction of what he did in his job. And he came to me and we started setting him up on a cash flow projection where he actually tracked his, he made a projection of what he wanted to earn. And then we tracked all of his activity, his sales activity. Cause you, you know, you've got to know your sales figures. You need to know how many leads to how many appointments, to how many presentations, to how many offers, to how many closed deals. You have to understand those nut metrics. So we started working with him on that. And in about four months, he jumped his sales to $10,000 a month because he started tracking. It's a simple little thing. Spend an hour or two each week measuring your results, tracking your stats, and you'll find that you'll be able to manage your business more effectively and grow it more successfully. Good or good? Great. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm gonna track.
Well, your question is, how do you know it's working? Track it. Uh, I need to find out more details. See me, Michelle. Okay. Cost versus profit. There's something called good debt and bad debt. And you need to know your costs and you need to know your profit. Because without knowing those things, you can't grow your business successfully. Without knowing that, you're living your life hodgepodge and getting along. A lot of clients often are so proud that they have no credit card debt. Now, I'm not an advocate of debt. However, there's good debt and there's bad debt. And if you're not spending money and thinking you're doing well, then you're holding yourself back because you need to be able to invest in your business and invest in yourself. Good debt versus bad debt. Know your return on investment. You need to know those numbers to grow your business. Now, I know a lot of you are like, your eyes are glazing over and you think, oh my God, if she doesn't stop talking about numbers, how many feel that way? Thank you, you're being kind, you're just smiling. But you need to know your numbers. You need to understand what works and what doesn't work so that you can do more of it or less of it accordingly. And I love this. Um, you can't make $500,000 business decisions with a $40,000 mindset. And I struggled with this. When I started my first company, I went to auctions and bought all my furniture at an auction. I did everything on a shoestring. I told you I had like three months of behind in my lease payments. So we had no money. I wasn't sure if I could get gas on the table. I had credit cards and I did cash advances against credit cards. But what happened was, is as I grew my business, my mindset stayed small. And so opportunities would come up and I would see them as too expensive because I was thinking too small financially. I was thinking like a $40,000 a year business owner instead of a million dollar business owner. And so if you want to have that bigger company, you need to make decisions from where you want to get to, not from where you are. Do you hear that? You have to make decisions from where you want to get to, not from where you are. Because if you make them from where you are, you're always going to be tinier, tighter, and smaller than you could be or than you need to be to get to where you want to be. Remember, what got you here got you at the 40K. If you want to get to the 500, you have to do something different, be different, think different. Okay? Good or good? Good. Okay. And yes, you can be too cheap. That's the reminder. So the next time you have an opportunity to invest in something, consider... Are you actually being too cheap and holding yourself back from making the money that you could because you're not willing to put it out there? And invest in yourself. You are the business from the sense of you're the, the, the brains behind the business. So invest in yourself so that you can grow your business more successfully and more profitably. All right, so that's the operational thinking. Make sense versus enterprise thinking. All right, let's move on to the final strategy that I want to share with you, and it's a question. Would you rather that or that? That. That or that? That. One more time. Let's see if I can do this right. That. What is that? A woman strategy. <laughs> a woman surrounded with a lot of paperwork and a lot of information. Misery or that. Okay, yeah, yes, that's what we want. So here's the point that I want to make is implementation is more important than information. I have so many business owners saying, oh, no, wait, stop, stop, stop. I have to learn this, right? Stop, stop. I need to perfect that. Stop, stop. I have to whatever. And really, it is about implementation. CEOs are decisive and they make quick decisions because guess what? Like this, there's another one coming and another one coming and another one coming. But if you're that entrepreneur trap of thinking you are the business, you only see this one decision and you're afraid that there might not be another one. And that's a falsehood. Be decisive and be very aggressive with implementation. So think of your day to day. How many of you implemented today? Or did you? Maybe not. If you want to be successful, if you want to have that multi-six-figure, seven-figure business, 
become a master at implementation. I'm trying to see the clock there, but I can't see my face. Okay, I'm kind of blinded by the light. All right. What's the difference between incremental growth and exponential growth? I'm here all rocket ship. I heard Wells. Shout them out. Little by little. Boom. Pardon? Polynomial difference. Wow. That's a good word. Hmm? Okay. Good. Thank you. Firecracker atomic bomb. Yes. So this is the thing is most entrepreneurs are stuck with in incremental. They think if they had a 10% increase, they're doing hot damn. But I'm saying you can 10 X your business this year. Now, right now you're probably thinking, holy cow, Sue, I don't know how to do that. Anybody kind of have that? Like, I'd love that, but yes. Anyone feel that way? Well, I've seen it happen and I've had it happen. And I can show you how to have it happen. But you have to believe and desire it to happen. And maybe 10x is too big. Maybe it's 3x or 4x or 5x. Oh, there you go. There's a woman after my heart, 100x. <laughs> Love that. Go for exponential growth. Incremental growth is a slow, long, hard way to be broke and poor. Right? Who wants to be broke and poor? Nada, nada. Okay? Exponential growth is the way to grow your business. <laughs> this little chart. It's this little guy. I want to grow my business. There you go. Slow. Growth. This is great. It's like, boo -hoo. Sure. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to five times it. And this is about um, Sue Gruber. She's a business over in Victoria, or Nanaimo, pardon me, Nanaimo. And what was really cool working with Sue was she was so afraid of growth, of like a fast growth, because she felt that she didn't have the infrastructure in place to manage it. And yes, that is true. I used to tell my sales team, don't sell this week, because we don't have enough employees to send out. And so we don't want to get a new client in and fail. So there's times to pull in the sales, if you don't have the infrastructure, you have to balance them up as you grow, but that's strategic. That's that enterprise mindset that will do that for you. Working with Sue, we were able to double her income in less than four months. Then she went on and did it again. She went from 150 to over 300 to on to 500. That's very possible for her. It's possible for you as well. So to get massive results, Massive action, absolutely. And the you doing the right things, and so you need to understand what those right things are, so that you can do them successfully. And so that's the really important piece of growing your business. So what were the three strategies I talked about? Number one was, you are not your business. Divorce yourself from that. You don't own a job. You own a business. It's funny, I was at a, I recently joined a woman's meetup group just to do social activities, and most of them are employees. And when they ask me what I do, I don't say I'm a marketing consultant or I'm a coach. I say, oh, I own a business. Now, in this room, it'd be weird because we'd all just say the same thing. When you're out in a social environment and you're not with other entrepreneurs, try saying it, I own a business. It shifts who you are in your business. What's number two? Enterprise thinking versus operational thinking. Become the enterprise that you want to be. Oops, and number three? Exponential growth. Exponential growth. That's where the big bucks are. That's where the big bucks are, and that's where you want to be because growing your business faster will give you more revenue so that you can do more with it. And when you have more revenue, you can spend more on marketing, you can hire more people, your business then continues to grow. When you're less than that 100K, you are struggling. Uh, you know, I remember a couple years ago, 100,000 was a lot of money. 100,000, by the time you pay your taxes, pay your expenses, you're not making a living. 
100 k is not a big business anymore, guys. When you hit the 500 mark, then you begin to be get, breathe. Then you begin to get to do fun things. So get there faster before you run out of money, run out of steam, and lose your business. And so questions? Any unanswered questions? Yes? They're not employees. Okay, thanks. Thank you, uh, Gary. Gary's question was, what, what about delegation? And absolutely, that's the part of not being the bottleneck and outsourcing. You have to come to become the CEO. You need to be the leader. Of your question over here. Depends on the business. I think you can get some really effective people that will do lead gen for you. Um, but I, you know, it also depends on your business, whether you want to do the sales. One of the things that really made a difference with my employment agency was when I hired someone to do cold calling for me and she booked me 15 appointments a week and I quite literally walked in the office every morning. She'd give me a map and I'd go and I got to do what I loved, which was sit knee to knee with a prospect who knew I was coming and sell. And that totally shifted my business. That was the one thing that made the biggest impact for me. So it can work. Yeah. Other questions at the back? Yeah. Good. I like that. The question was how, if you're not your business, how can you have a personal brand? I think you can still have a personal brand in your business. The you're not your business is more a come from about how you manage it, how you control it, and how you actually, you know, move forward in it, and how you strategically outgrow it. So I think, yes, you can still have a personal brand and still believe that you, you're not your business. It's kind of like a split personality. Great. Any other questions? Okay. So for those of you, oops, I think your battery died. Maybe I did. Let's try that. I did. There you go. Sometimes growing a business looks like that, right? I was in LA recently. I rented a car. I said, like, holy cow, I'm lost. Um, but I had a GPS and I knew exactly how to go. And that GPS made all the difference for me. And what was really cool about the GPS is it helped me navigate through the mass. And I think as business owners, you all need a GPS. Um, I offer a GPS session, it's complimentary, where we hop on the phone and we talk about your business, where you are now, where you wanna get to, and see what opportunities to see if and how I can help you grow your business in that direction. And so if you are interested in having a GPS session with me, for all the YouTube listeners and those of you in the room, is that you can apply for a session and we'll hop on the phone and we'll talk about your business and know which way to grow it. So that wraps up my presentation tonight. Thank you so much. Oh, you want my mic? So, <laughs> so, so you've made you, a, a small business can be really, really. You're hot. I know I'm hot. No. <laughs> I just I have a fan. <laughs> and you're the fan. <laughs> you, entrepreneurs around the world, just forget what I just said. I was just looking down my shirt. <laughs> a small business can be really, really complicated. And what Sue has done, just done, has made it really, really simple. On behalf of EBN, I thank you. Thanks for having me. That's fun. Okay.